is Sammy Ghost, and I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. I'm uh, 46 years old. I actually started using drugs at the age of uh, 15, using marijuana, drinking, things of that nature. And that's when all of it began. Uh, that's when all my problems started coming toward me. One drug led to another. I began to use uh, pop pills, things of that nature. And, um, I became I became an addict at that time. I didn't finish high school. I made it to the 12th grade, and uh, four, four months before graduation, I, went, I got in more trouble. I got incarcerated again, and uh, they sent me to the Pentagon. I, had, I ended up doing six months, so I didn't graduate. I got out of the Pentagon, I started to work. I got out and started working, and I got married. And um, I had one child, then no, then no. <laughs> After that, um, I started using drugs again. You know, that's when crack cocaine come out, whatever. You know, I began to uh, use crack cocaine, and my problem got worse and worse and worse. So I uh, got sick, and uh, I started taking medication, you know, things of that nature. At that time, uh, my diagnosis was schizophrenic and depression. You know, and so uh, okay. in 1994, uh, I uh, called aggravated assault charge against my wife and brother, well, basically against my wife, uh, and uh, I kind of snapped and a nerve breakdown and whatever, and that's how I got into the uh, jail diversion thing. Uh, that's when I became incarcerated, bro. To have a mental illness and be in jail, it's pretty rough. Pretty rough because you get you get incarcerated with all different other types of people, you know, and uh, sometimes you don't always get your medication. And then I still had a lot of unsolved issues I had, you know, which we all have issues. But I had a bunch of issues, you know, going through a divorce. You know, my parents, my mother had died, passed away. You know, I was still grieving on the inside, being incarcerated, unable to go to her funeral or anything, you know, the judge wouldn't allow me to go, you know, and I had a lot of unforgiveness in my heart toward the judge, you know. And uh, I was court ordered to go to a mandatory outpatient and all that. I refused to go. I refused to go. They would lock me up again, lock me up again. And then I would be on the run from the police. They put me in the Memphis most warning things of that nature, uh, for uh, not complying to the court order. And so uh, I continued to get arrested for the same thing over and over and over. I wanted to do things my way. I wanted to do things my way, you know, and I found out that doing things my way by getting high and using, it wasn't the right way. And so one day, uh, Mr. Stephen Bush, uh, he come in, I was locked up in the hole. He come to visit me as attorney visiting me, and he says, uh, he throws his folder down, and he's, darn it, why is you keep coming in here? You have no reason being in here. You don't never do anything. You know, I never, I never did go out and commit crimes or, or robbing or, or stealing or burglarizing one. I always worked for mine, kept my habit, kept my fix for me. So I finally took he, I said, man, crazy. What did he care? You know, but I, apparently he did care. I started applying to the court order by um, going to outpatient treatment and things of that nature. My public defender, he, he working through Jericho and with the court system made sure that I got my medication, that I was able to get to the clinic to meet my needs, you know, by having a place to stay. Being a, when you get out, uh, when you get out of jail, give you an opportunity to kind of be stable, a little. you know. And once you're stable, you can do the things. You can start planning things, setting short-term goals for yourself, and things of that nature, you know. So I began to uh, to go to church, things of that nature, and seek some help. You know, I said rehab rehab wouldn't work, so I start praying and going to church, things of that nature. And that's when my recovery started. 
when I started seeking God and letting God do what, what he can do for me that I couldn't do. And that's when I began to become clean and sober. And um, so some more problems came across and I kind of stumbled a little bit, relapsed. All right, so after that, I go back to court. They still didn't lock me up, but uh, they put me in this place called Foundation and things of that nature. I went there for a while. The public defender office helped me uh, get out get out of jail, you know, and send me to places. It helped me to uh, to better my life. I got cut a little from the judge. Yeah, this year, this year, I was I wasn't expecting it or anything, you know. I had been under court order since 1994. You know, that's a long time, you know, and this year I got cut loose from being under a court order to do anything, you know, and that was a big burden lift up off of me right there, you know. I don't have to do this no more, I don't have to do that no more. I can be free, I can go to work, I can do this, I can maybe even go back to school, or, you know, you know, I can go do some volunteer work, I can do whatever I want to do now, you know. It's like, it's like I've been reborn, you know what I mean, on my own self again as I was, when I was 12 or 13, you know, coming up, you know, I enjoy life now. You know, I can laugh, I can talk, you know, I can keep a few dollars in my pocket, you know. I have a bank account now, you know, things of that nature, you know. I didn't do crack cocaine every day, but when I did it, I did it. And I didn't drink it every day, but when I did it, I did it, you know. So, you know, um, to be just 10 miles clean and sober, man, I feel great. You know, I just feel great, you know. I feel great all over, you know. These 10 months have been the best months of my life.